So now the Khalifa is Abdullah ibn Zubair and his grandfather was Abu Bakr. So he was a companion and the son of a companion. And his mother was Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr. And his aunt is Aisha, the mother of the believers. And his grandmother from his father's side is Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, the aunt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And from his father's side, his grandfather is Al-Awwam ibn Khawailid, the brother of Khadija radiallahu anha. And he was born on the year of Al-Hijrah. And he was the first male to be born to the Muslims after the Hijrah. Because when the Muslims made Hijrah to Medina, the Jews of Medina spread this rumor, saying that we have done sihr, magic, upon the Muslims, so that they will never have a male child born to them. And they spread this rumor. And for a while, after the Muslims arrived in Medina, every time a child is born, it's a female. And every time a male is born, it dies. So the people started to believe that the Jews had put a curse on the Muslims. And that the Muslims are going to end because they can't multiply now. So the people believed it. And at that, around that time, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, anha, she was in the last days of her pregnancy. She goes into labor and she gives birth to a healthy boy, Abdullah ibn Subair, and he does not die. So the Muslims were very happy with him. And they took him to his grandfather, Abu Bakr, and he carried him. And the Muslims followed them. They raised this child and they were making takbir around Medina, saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then Abu Bakr goes and gives him to the Prophet wasallam, And the Prophet wasallam, takes a date and he chooses it and then he puts it into the mouth of the boy. And then the Prophet ﷺ names him Abdullah. And they used to say that he used to resemble his grandfather Abu Bakr more than anyone. And the first word that Abdullah ibn Zubair uttered when he was a child was Asseh, the sword. He was raised in the houses of a warrior. And the first word he said was a safe. And they used to say he would never leave a safe, meaning physically and not from his tongue. He would constantly be saying a safe or playing with a safe. And for that reason he becomes one of the most magnificent warriors. And they used to say there were three things you could not challenge Abdullah ibn Zubair with. Courage and ibadah, worshipping Allah and his eloquence. And if you look in the books of fiqh, if you look under Khushur, you will always find the mention of Abdullah ibn Zubair because he used to never move in his salah. He is the one that they mentioned when he would stand for salah, the bird would come and sit on him, thinking he's part of the tree. An eyewitness says one time, Abdullah ibn Zubair prostrated. And while he was prostrating, I read Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran and Al-Nisa and Al-Ma'idah, and he still didn't raise his head from sujood. So now Bay'ah is being given to Abdullah ibn Zubair. He goes to his mother, Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, radiallahu anha. And he went to his mother, and she was over a hundred years old, and she was blind. And when he entered the room, he gave her salam, and she replied to his salam, and then she asked him, where have the men of Al-Hujjaj reach? And he said, inna fil mawti la raha. He said, oh my mother, in death, I will find peace and tranquility. And then he said, Oh my mother, all my companions have left me, hatta waladi wa ahli, until my own family and my children have left my side, and I only have a handful of people around me. And the people are ready to give me whatever I want from this dunya, meaning that they are allowing me to go wherever I want. What is your opinion, O oh my mother? And his mother said, Ya Bunaya, anta a'luma bin nafsik. She said, Oh my son, you are more knowledgeable regarding your circumstances than me. And then she said, But I do say that if you know that you are on the truth, if you know that you are on the truth, then die like your companions. This is her child, and she's telling him that if you are on the truth, then die like your companions died. How long will you stay on earth? Being killed is better. This is a mother giving her son advice to be killed for what he believes in and for the sake of Allah. So then he tells her mother, 
I fear that if the people of Asham kill me, that they may disfigure me. After I'm dead, they make them feel and crucify me. So she tells him, Oh son, the sheep is not hurt by the skinning after death. Meaning after it's death, it's dead. It doesn't feel it when it's skinned. So go on your way and seek the help of Allah. And then when she said this, he stood up and he kissed her upon his forehead. And he said, Oh my mother, Wallahi hadha ra'i. He said, I swear by Allah, this is my opinion. And I have no desire to live in this dunya. For my aspirations is the hereafter. And all my life I have stood up for the truth. But all I wanted to know is your opinion. So that your opinion strengthens my opinion. And then his mother said, Come closer my son. And when he came closer to her, she embraced him. And when she embraced him, she felt that he had some metal armor on. And she said, oh my son, what is this? For people who want shahada, don't wear this. This is not the action of someone who wants to martyr them. And that's what you want. So he told her, I only put it on to make you not fear for me. So you would not fear for me. So then she says, remove it. And then she tells him, tighten your clothes so that your, your privates may not be uncovered. And he leaves saying, he says, إِنِّي إِذَا أَعْرِفُ يَوْمِي أَسْبِرُ وَإِنَّمَا يَعْرِفُ يَوْمَهُ الْحُرُّ He says, if I know the day I'm going to die, I'll be patient upon that. And she hears him and she says, be patient insha'Allah. Your fathers are Abu Bakr and Zubair and your mother is Safiya, the daughter of Abdul Muttalib. So he goes out to fight. And the narrations mention that on that day, Abdullah ibn Zubair went out and he fought like a thousand men. And he fights and all of his friends fight and they fought until they were killed, his friends. And the one who is defending Ibn Zubair the most and fighting the most fiercely and ferociously and was the last of his friends to die was Abdullah ibn Mutiyya. And Abdullah ibn Mutiyya had run away in the battle of al Harra in Medina. We said it was a fierce battle in Medina. He ran away on that day and this hurt him that he ran away on such a day. And he was fighting and he was saying, أَنَا الَّذِي فَرَرْتُ يَوْمَ الْحَرَّ وَالْحُرُّ لَا يَفِرُّ إِلَّا مَرَّ He was saying, I am the one who fled during the Harra invasion and a free man only runs on one occasion. And he refuses to withdraw on, on this day, the 73rd year after the Hijrah. And after he dies, Ibn Zubair was fighting by himself. And the narrations mention that Abdullah ibn Zubair from noon until evening he fought. He's fighting alone and he, he's 73 years old and they're not able to kill him. And every time they attacked him, he turned them back. So they said, Wallahi, we have never seen fighting such as his. He is equal to a thousand men. Had ibn Abi. The enemy was saying, هذا ibn Abi, And this is the sentence that was said by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. هذا ibn Abi, meaning he takes the characteristics and his manners and he is like his father, as Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiallahu anhu. So then the time for salah comes. And he tells them, let me pray. So they left him and he prayed. And while he was praying, some of the dissolute, they took stones and they threw it at him while he was praying. And some of the stones came and they flew it right in front of his face. And he never moved. He did not move, not a little bit. The entire time that he prayed. And the stones came in front of his face. And they came and landed near him and he never moved. He is the one who is mentioned in the ahadith of being focused in your salah. And then the fighting continues. The whole army of Al-Hajjaj against one man. And the whole army fights him from dawn until Maghrib. From dawn until Maghrib, an entire army cannot defeat one man. It shows what kind of a warrior he was. So they started to throw stones at him. And a huge stone struck him on his head and he fell. And then he was on the floor and he was still fighting. And then they cut off his leg and finally they martyred him. And the narration mentioned that when they martyred him, Makkah erupted with crying. Subhanallah, the day he was born, Medina erupted with happiness. And the day he died, Makkah erupted with crying. And Hujaj ibn Yusuf al-Sakafi stood up and he said, Oh people, know that Abdullah was the best of people. But when he rebelled against the Khalif, then he had to be removed from Makkah. 
For Adam was best of people. And when he rebelled against the command of Allah, he was removed from Jannah. And Adam is better than Zubair. And Jannah is better than Makkah. See, twisted people. See, the very nature of twisted people is that they will always give you twisted analogies. And there was no man who was more twisted than Al-Hujjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi He was the most twisted of people. And then the narrations mention that Hujjaj, he came to the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu, and he wanted to break her resolve. And he said, how has Allah dealt with his enemy? And Asma radiallahu anhu, these were people who weren't scared of death. He said, you may have corrupted this dunya, but he has corrupted your akhirah. And then Al-Hajjaj took his body and he hung it in the entrance to Mecca. And people would pass by and Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma passed by. And the army is making takbir. They're saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So he said to them, Tukabbirun inda mawtih. You make takbir at his death. Wallahi I have seen the Muslims making takbir at his birth. By Allah the ones who made takbir at his birth are better than the ones who made takbir at his death. And he would pass by him every time as he is hung. And he would say, As-salamu, As-salamu alayka ya Aba Khubayb. As-salamu alayka ya Aba Khubayb. As-salamu alayka ya Aba Khubayb. Every time he passed by, he greeted him three times. And all of Mecca would greet him as they passed. And people told the Hajjaj, bring him down. And he said, no, until his mother pleads with me. And then the narration mentioned that there was a beautiful fragrance coming from his mutilated body. And what the men of Hujaj did is they tied a cat around his waist, a dead cat. And the narration mentioned that the fragrance was so beautiful that even over the stench of the dead cat, you could smell this fragrance. You could smell this fragrance. And then they went to Al Hujaj and they said, Hujaj, now take his body down. It's been up for days. And he's, Hujaj said, I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah, I will not take it down until Asma comes and begs me. And when they told Asma radiallahu anha, she said, take me to where my body of my son is. Because she was blind at the time. And they took her to where the body of her son was. And she made dua for her son. And then she said, Ama aana lihaadhul faris an yanzil? Said, Ama aana lihaadhul faris an yanzil? Said, isn't it time that this knight of Allah was allowed to come off his horse? Isn't it time that this knight was allowed to come off his horse? And when they told Hujaj what she had said, he felt so little that he knew he had lost the battle. And then he brought the body of Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu anhu down. See, this was a man who lived and died for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.